neo-American pioneers with the title track of their terrific album, Into the Deep. They have a show this weekend at the Yellow Cab Tavern where they are celebrating the music of Creighton's Clearwater Revival and goodness knows all of the terrific songwriting that John Fogarty was a part of. And I have Billy and Dan of Neo-American Pioneers here in the studio. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Yeah, greetings, Dave. Thanks for having us. WUDR listeners. <laughs> well, I, I hope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the way things have been going today, I don't know, these darn gremlins. But I'm, I'm just curious, why a CCR show? Well, I think it almost started off as kind of a joke, right? Uh, yeah, so we, we had covered <laughs> Grapevine for, mm -hmm. I think it was Ladyfest. Which is originally Marvin Gaye, as we probably all know. Yeah. John uh, CCR did a pretty killer version of it. Indeed. But then uh, uh, A Song for Everyone is always a song that both Dan and I have liked, and we were just kind of joking around one day, <laughs> playing it, and we're like, man, we should play this song. So then we ended up playing two CCR songs at our last show in November. That was an Old Fashioned's EP release uh, show. Yeah. But, uh, and then the next practice we had, we're like, man, we should just do a show, because... You know, we see our friends do this Beatles tribute show, and there are all these other tribute shows in town. And uh, at least from my perspective, if there's any band that I know a lot of, and mm -hmm. I almost feel like I even kind of modeled my voice after him a little bit. Oh, really? He sings in that higher register. Yeah. And, yeah, and actually, I'm surprised that we never get comparisons to CCR, because I feel like from a songwriting perspective, like I feel like I write songs like he does, to where he kind of focuses in on this like hook. And then that kind of carries the song in, in a sense. Um, I could but, totally see that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the CCR, uh, you know, to me, well, probably Billy as well, was, to my formative years as a musician, it was very important uh, kind of, you know, getting into the music from that era and, uh, you know, all the hits they had on the, they were still playing on classic rock radio and then digging into some of the deep cuts, uh, a lot of good guitar stuff and uh, good things to learn as you're a youngster learning. Yeah, well, and diving deep into this, too, I feel like started unpacking all these reasons why this was a great band for us to do, you know, and it just kind of evolved because, um, you know, like Heather and myself, like our voices are suited for these particular types of songs, mm -hmm. and like the way Dan plays guitar is like a perfect complement for the style that he plays, and and the rhythm section, like, oh yeah, those, totally yeah. locked in, and I... Yeah, CCR rhythm section was wonderful. I think a lot of times they're overlooked by maybe some other things that went on with CCR, but the, you know those two, uh, Doug and Stu Cook, were great, and Ian and Trevor are really locked in, and then of course we've got Paul kind of being the utility man, picking up the keys, acoustic and electric, uh, to cover all the ground to try to replicate it live. Yeah, Paul has like a, a six or seven instrument spread back in his area, <laughs> so he's got acoustic guitar, electric guitar, keyboards, like... I'm just curious, did you, uh, uh, of all their wealth of songs, right? I mean, I, I have to admit, okay, listeners, let's, let's, we're going to lay all our cards on the table because I think that makes for the, the most interesting storytelling. It's one of the first records I actually ordered that actually came out. I'm living in a small town, Herman, Minnesota, 550 people. And I order a compilation CCR record, right? So it, it's one of those two record, just collection of hits with a few additional songs. And I'm being struck by songs like Run, for, Run Through the Jungle, right? Or Effigy, you know, songs, you know, maybe, okay, I, I'm seeing, you know, love from the guitar player. But, but no, no, in, in all seriousness, like that, that there was a richness and a deepness. And, and, and dare, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there because I, apparently I'm going there's a darkness to some of the songs and some of the lyrics. I, I'm just curious, like, the wealth of songs that CCR has, right? People think, like, Cool Stop the Rain or something like that or, or Low Die or, you know, Around the Corner, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But they have a deep, rich catalog. How do you choose what to play? Well, we chose 25, <laughs> so, there, so there's a lot. We, we had Effigy on the possible list, but we, oh, did, we did not have enough time. Yeah. But we do love it. Eventually, we'll, we'll get it in, because we'll probably do this again at some point. So. So, so I don't get the opportunity to scream like a small child in the back of the room. Oh, well, you can't. <laughs> but, yeah. but, 
Billier to say. Oh no, I was gonna say Effigy was one of one of the deeper cuts that you know a lot of people I feel like they got Chronicle mm-hmm. or Chronicle mm-hmm. Two or something. So if you if you only had like Chronicle One, you kind of missed Effigy and some of those bigger like even the song wrote a song for everyone. I think it was on two, but it wasn't on one. So there are all these hits and even like uh, album tracks that were almost more jam based. Yeah. yeah. And like oh, uh, especially the early experimental. Covers, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, like, listening back, there's so many good songs, but we, you know, try to focus on the hits, I think, more than anything, because ultimately the goal is to have a show where people connect and enjoy, and hearing something you're familiar with is the easiest way. There's a few deeper cuts in there, so. Yeah. Well, is it is it just Neo-American Pioneers playing? We do have some guests, yep. but I'd say the majority of it is, is us. I think we have maybe, th- well... I think we had maybe four songs where there's a guest singer, but the rest of it is either Heather or myself. And Heather sings more than I do, so. Well, and, and a phenomenal voice. What a great voice she has. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's a couple songs where, like, when she sang it, I was like, oh, so good. There's there's two in particular that I'm, I really, I'm really excited about. I think the crowd will kind of go crazy. And then there's a couple that... None of them wanted to touch, so we called in some friends for some help. <laughs> yeah. so, so neither Heather nor you wanted to do it? Yeah, yeah, there's a couple of those. I'm still doing one of them I didn't want to do, but but I, I think I can do it. Well, I'm, I'm just curious, in terms of what you're trying to do, it, it, it almost sounds, looking at the event page on Facebook, like there's a kind of hootenanny feel to it. Is, is that fair? So, yeah, so... You know, uh, normally people do these tribute shows, it's maybe more of an elaborate thing or whatever. And when we were playing these songs, I almost felt like it would have been how you would have heard CCR play them when they were still playing clubs. Mm -hmm. And not like the big theaters or like the big stages. So that's why, you know, we had the Cosmos Factory in my basement. You know, we did this kind of mock-up and I refer to it as Cosmos Basement. And so I'm kind of trying to get that more raw rock and roll vibe and sound. Maybe because that's what we do, and that's the easiest thing to do. Yeah, I, I, we're uh, we're pretty, but we're for the most part sticking pretty true to the arrangements and the spirit of the song. But we're taking the liberty to change some things where it's suited for us better. But I think we're keeping the vibe pretty pretty close. So Yellow Cap Tavern, Saturday night, May seventh, right? May seventh, Saturday night. What time? 8 p.m.? 8, Doors 8, show at 9. Doors 8, music at 9. Yeah. Yellow Cap Tavern, which is a great venue in town. Anyone listening to the show right now, I cannot emphasize enough what a great space that is. So I have to ask you guys, do you have a favorite CCR song? I do, yeah, for sure. Uh, so my favorite CCR song is also probably in my top five favorite songs of all time. Uh, <laughs> and it's there, there's, a, there's a story, too, is... Uh, there's a movie called The War. Uh, came out in the early to mid 90s. Kevin Costner plays in it. Uh, he's the dad. It's about this kind of group of kids. And uh, there's this scene, and there's this big live oak tree. And I think it's this famous live oak tree that's maybe close to Savannah or somewhere. But Who'll Stop the Rain comes on in that scene. And as a kid, I never heard that song. And I remember, like, immediately after that, I found who it was, and I, I bought Chronicle. And as a kid, you know, I would mow the yard on the riding lawn or whatever, <laughs> and I had headphones on, and I just remember as a kid, like, the reverb on his voice in that mm-hmm. song, it, it just, like, it just reeks nostalgia. Yeah. And and that song drew me in, and, and it drew me into the band as a whole, but there's always been something special about that song to me. And I don't know if it's the sound of it, or the meaning of it, um, but that's always stuck with me ever since I was a kid, and it's still in my top five, so... If you're just joining us, we have Billy and Dan of Neo-American Pioneers here in the studio. They're playing a Creedence Clearwater Revival, sort of sort of a tribute show at the Yellow Cab Tavern this Saturday. Doors are at 8, music at 9. And I also have to know, CCR could do a great cover. You know, they're, they're known for some of their covers. I mean, Ike and Tina Turner, you know, of course. There's this whole, who really owns that song? You know, they, they've got a classic version of I Put a Spell on You, yeah. which, which has always been one that I've really loved. Do you guys have a favorite cover 
or song that they did that wasn't known as one of their own? I think Spell on You is pretty pretty darn good. Um, yeah. We'll let you guess who's going to sing that one. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, you, will, you, will, you, will, you will hear that. Yeah. Um, I, I have an educated guess, but yeah. uh, I think people should be surprised. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I think their their version of Suzy Q was great. Yes. Um, the original uh, is one of, you know, James Burton was the guitar player oh, on that. Yeah. That was Dale Hawkins was the, mm -hmm. the rockabilly rock and roll guy that did that. But, uh, you know, that was a short, probably two-minute song in the 50s, but they kind of expanded up on that and jammed it out a little bit, changed the chord structure. So I think what they did kind of moved that forward. But it's kind of cool how that uh, you know evolved uh, from the 50s to 60s, that whole progression. Well, let's play a Neo-American Pioneer song followed by a CCR song. And I, of course, mentioned Spell because I'm going to play it. But definitely make plans. Put it on your calendar. Take the calendar out, right? Lord knows I have calendars. I have four and counting. Shut up with your judgment. Put it on the calendar this Saturday, Yellow Cab Tavern, Doors at 8, Music at 9. It is a song for everyone featuring Neo American Pioneers doing the Creedence Clearwater Revival. Cool. Yeah, seriously, I put, it's like they make it their own, right? I put a spell on you oh, yeah, something totally yeah. different. Does, yeah, especially because Screaming Jay Hawkins was really right. Cool. Yeah, just, yeah, he wants to go back to back. Uh, they're for, I mean, the other version of Grapevine and Before You Accuse Me, and there's some other early ones I think that were covers on there. Well, and it's it, it, it's Cotton so Fields. interesting because yeah, yeah, Midnight Special. Oh, Midnight yeah. Special, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, and, and obviously the, they have um, an interest in in I don't know what you want to call it without sounding foolish, right? Some good authentic or rootsy folk music. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, your words are better than mine. <laughs> and and yet they can they can rev it up. Right. Or, or even, there are a couple of songs I'm thinking of where, where, where like they slow it down. Yeah. Right? What would service the song? Yeah. Well, and, I, I, yeah, it's, it's interesting, like, because I'm big on studying where things come from mm -hmm. and backtracking, but, like, you know, you got Fogarty, and he really, you know, like, the uh, Cotton Fields was Lead Belly, and then uh, Midnight Special, well, I think they both, you know, they're old folk songs. He's got that world, he's got the rockabilly thing with Susie Q, and then like the bluesy, it's kind of all that American music and the country yeah, stuff he kind of yeah. draws from, and he really created his own thing, and you know, American music. It, well, and, and that's what's so interesting, and people will say things like, oh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, they're, they're from the South, right? Or they're from like the Alabama South, or something, South, it's like, yeah. they're from California. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and granted, there are lots of, you know, that, that part. Of yeah. California, yeah. you know, there's a lot of interesting things going on, right? A lot of interesting bands come come out of that part of, of the West, but so many. I remember years ago listening to an interview with with John Fogerty on like Fresh Air with Terry Gross, yeah. and she's like, "Say these words for me," <laughs> like he should have a Southern drawl or something. Yeah. He's like, "No, it's just." The music, like you were saying, yeah. Dan, that's the music I listened to. That's the music that inspired me. Yeah, he kind of made, melded it all into yeah. his own take on it. And uh, it, it's so interesting because people make these assumptions like, like no, they're a California band. Right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Yeah, or people think, you know, all the, the swampy sounds. And yes, this, you know. yes. I think like, I read that he had never, you know, he was like writing like Born in the Bayou of Proud Mary, but he had never really visited those places. No. We did read a lot of Mark Twain, so he that did. You know, yeah. probably seeped in. You look like you're going to say oh, something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think about where you would think they would come from. I mean, yeah. it sounds like Alabama, Muscle Shoals. Yeah, Muscle exactly, Shoals, exactly. Yeah. 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 And, and I hear, I don't mean, mean to be a jerk about it, right? You know, people hear what speaks to them. But, but, but it's interesting to me, like, okay, I can see how you make that leap. Yeah. But then when you read about the band, well, like, uh, I, I admit it, you know, my mom was originally from Arkansas and then moved to California and then Minnesota, which I always feel like bad in retrospect for her, but I like being here. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that had to be kind of odd in a way, right? There they, they, they go, that gravel, yeah. too. He could, he, 
Fogarty can be sweet, or he can be really gravelly oh, yeah. when he wants to be. Yeah. Um, he's still got it. He's 70. He's, he's still uh, sounds right? pretty darn the, good. I, I saw him a couple of years ago, yeah. and I was blown away yeah. by how good he played and how good he yeah. sounded. I hope I look and sound that good when I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Did you see him at the phrase, maybe? Yeah. I yeah, saw yeah, him yeah. Were you there? I, was there. I, I, was I saw him row. in 2007. I was not second row. <laughs> I saw him in 2007 at the phrase. That's okay. Okay, show. so, yeah. yeah we, the same we show. know, you know, but I was like, so cool. Well, yeah. and, and I've seen him a few times. Not a ton, not as yeah. much as I'd like. I've never given a bad show. Right. You know, I remember there was one show, God, I forget where this was, wasn't in Ohio, but but there were sound problems. He just picks up an acoustic guitar yeah. and he literally just stood at the edge of this edge, excuse me, of the stage, and he just played something. And it's funny because you, you, people are just sort of like, "What's going on?" And it took a minute, I think, even for the for like the the roadie or the sound guys, they they he didn't have a microphone, and the room got real quiet because everybody was trying to listen to him. And then you, know, you could hear the guitar, but you couldn't hear him so clearly. And everybody was kind of like in the moment. And so uh, then, then when, when they bring out like a, a microphone, you, you realize like, oh, we've all been just trying to hear his voice. And we were all so into it. You know, no one screaming like, get on the mic, right. you know, or anything like that. Everyone was just into it. That's cool. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I love those moments. Do you remember what venue that was? Oh, God, I'll never remember. <laughs> I'll look it up, though, because okay. I know. Yeah. I, I made a, a note for it, and I, I wrote for a blog, and like, what are your best concert experiences, and something like that that was so beautiful. Yeah. Like when I saw, and everybody has this story, like the, the Reverend Al Green, you know, who performed for, for a long time, yeah. and he would, I didn't know this was something he did, I just thought it was special for us. Uh, he literally, you know, drops the microphone on purpose, right? He kind of slams it down, and then he walks into the crowd, and he's still singing, and everybody just kind of makes way around him, and we all get quiet. It was just, it was just so lovely. No one's like, woo, or you know, yeah. something like that. Everyone's just into the they moment. Got the respect of, yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, or I love when when artists just show you their emotions. You know, I, you cry, I cry. <laughs> We could to come in after this, talk one one more time, and then maybe grab the guitars. Yeah, that's cool. Time. Yeah, sure. So I I get where you got the name of song for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we thought so, about calling it Billy and the Poor Boys. <laughs> <laughs> CCRR is the word <laughs> CCRR. Critical <laughs> revival, revival, revive, or revival. Oh no, that gets into some tricky territory with that <laughs> band. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it seems like it, all the books I've read, it's like I want I want my musical heroes to like each other. <laughs> yeah, it's not it doesn't the usually work out. <laughs> Dan, don't take this from me. Pink Floyd, Beatles. <laughs> well, that I, I do admit that the Beatles one stings a little bit. Yeah, that stings a little bit. Okay, Pink Floyd. It's like, do I would I want to be Roger Waters' friend? I don't know. I don't know that I'd want to be his friend and hang out with him. Yeah. But then again, the guy's like a, I don't know what I'd call him, a credit card Marxist or a country club Marxist. He golfs everywhere he goes. It's so, like, wait a minute. Yeah, there's a little <laughs> yeah, disconnect. <laughs> discrepancies. Oh yeah, <laughs> Creedence Clearwater Revival with I Put a Spell on You, which I think, Dan, speaks to exactly what you were talking about, how they could take a song and make it their own. So, so when you hear a version like that, what, what thoughts do you guys have? As musicians, do you notice, like, okay, the key change or the tempo change, or, or is it just like, I mean... It's not screaming Jay, but there's still a lot of emotion there. What do you guys notice? Well, I noticed once we had to do that run. <laughs> 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 I guess the thing in the middle of the, kind of goes through all the chords. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, listening to the originals a lot. A lot of times I'll just go back just for fun to see because we, you know, of course, we were modeling hours after the CCR one, but it's kind of fun to see what the key change is and the tempo, and even they'll throw some chord changes in there that might not have been there before. So it's interesting to see the progression. Well, there, hey, oh, go ahead. I say there are songs like Proud Mary that you think are a cover, but it's not a cover. Right, right. And mm -hmm. like Dan sent this podcast to me, and he was kind of talking about that song specifically. And the, the interviewer... The interview oh, Rob Lowe. Yeah, Rob Lowe. Yeah, John Fogarty was on Rob Lowe's podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, I, a, he's a very good interviewer. He's I have heard that. But yeah. yeah check, check out that interview. Because yeah. It's, it's super interesting, but one of Rob Lowe's comments was is that Proud Mary just felt like this song that always existed. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and it has that vibe, and it's almost, you would think it would be like, I put a spell on you to where, like, oh, this is a cover, but no, it's not a cover. It's like, it's... I think it was 22 song. when he wrote it or something. Well, and we were talking earlier that, that he had read quite a bit of Mark Twain, and that's clearly coming through on Proud Mary for, for the obvious reasons about the, the main subject of the song. But also it has that kind of American standard kind of feel. It feels older than it is, mm -hmm. or, or it feels more kind of rooted than it is. And that's sort of one of the things that I find interesting about CCR and, and, and Fogarty's solo work, that, that there's often this sense of timelessness to the music. Yeah, like every song. Yeah. Every, every song is like some hit from yesteryear or, or tied to your memory. Or... It's, you know, it's also in, probably in the subconscious, it's, it's in so many movies and things. So yeah, as a youngster, you're probably like Forrest Gump, for example, you know, you're seeing that. And maybe you might not remember hearing it, but, you know, it's, it's definitely there. I wonder if anyone's ever kept track, right? Other than, other than the lawyers or the people who want to make sure that, that folks get paid and no disrespect there, of course. But how often has a Fogarty song or a CCR song been used? In any Vietnam-era movie probably has <laughs> at least one CCR song. Right? And it fits, too, like that's what, you know, we're... Like, even just, like, singing Run Through the Jungle and thinking about all these things are so specifically tied to that period of American history and all the dissent that was happening and all the different movements going on. Now, is Effigy written around the Vietnam War? Is, is that its subject matter? There's some debate about what that song's about. Yeah, I'd have to look into that a little more... Uh... But He's pretty tricky. He could be. He's pretty tricky too, because I forget what song it was that people think is about the Viet the Vietnam War. Maybe it's actually for one of the songs is like, "Oh, that isn't a protest song," and it talks about it in that Rob Lowe interview. Well, like "Fortunate Son." Yeah. You know, people are like, "Oh, this is a an indictment of the system," and gosh, I forget where where he said that. It was like in one of these big newspaper interviews, like the New York Times or something. And he's like, well, if that's your takeaway, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. classic musician answer, the right? Typical, <laughs> the typical Bob Dylan thing. <laughs> yeah, what do, you, what do you think it means, right? We're, right. Oh, Dylan is always turning that around. Now. Well, Bob, we're asking you because you wrote the song. <laughs> yeah. If you're just joining us, we have Dan and Billy of Neo-American Pioneers here in the studio. We're talking about their tribute show this weekend, Saturday, May 7th, at the Yellow Cab Tavern. Doors are at 8, music is at 9. It is a great venue. They are a terrific band. I do have to say, totally disconnected to CCR. Your album, your last album was fantastic. I, oh man, Wandering Eye is just heartbreak on record for me. And the fever has some incredible vocals, but but even like round and round, I think closes the album. Yeah, is is this kind of swaying, almost seductive in terms of, oh, I don't think this is about what I think it's about. I, I'm just curious if you in your songwriting, Billy, take inspiration from CCR. Yeah, I, I think from a. And we kind of talked about this voice-wise, but that was one of the bands that I grew up singing. And I, I like the way he wrote characters, and I almost feel like the biggest thing I got from him is maybe the earnestness. Mm. Is, you know, sometimes I, I can write things that 
are a more kind of tongue in cheek or, or you know, there's always like a silly song or something, but I think at the heart of it is that that's kind of what I try to capture is that heartfelt kind of earnestness. And I think that he nails that. Like Fogarty wanted to write songs to connect to people. I mean, he wrote a song for everyone, called a song for everyone. <laughs> it's kind of on the nose, right? Yeah. Kind of direct. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I feel like in that, and, and it's totally, it's very Americana, too, and, you know, I feel like we're, it's in our name, you know, Neo-American Pioneers, and that kind of Americana vibe and different samples of rock and roll history is what we're always trying to incorporate, and, you know, we all grew up on that, that kind of music. I'm just curious, do you see yourself doing other tribute shows? Do, are there other oh, bands that speak to you? We, we just... Yes. I mean, there, there are other bands that it would be cool, but, uh, you know, the work we've put in, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it is it a lot of work to prep for something like this? Oh, yeah. So, I like it. Special props to Dan here. So, Dan, Dan is, like, the choreographer, like, <laughs> band director. I mean, he, you know, he tabbed out all these songs. So we had, you know, we have notes of everything, and he kind yeah. of compiled everything together and, and kept everyone on track. And and even our rhythm section, too. I mean, Trevor oh, yeah. and Who Ian specifically, like, and, yeah. and Ian, like, our bass player, man, like, he really stepped it up. Because a lot of people don't think about it, but, like, the ba those bass lines in those songs are so intricate, and, like, those guys nail it. Yeah. I, I feel like, you know, me, Heather, and Paul kind of had the easier jobs. Like, we had to memorize lyrics, but... You know, you can do that when you're driving down the road or whatever. Right. But actually, like, sitting out and tabbing out these guitar parts and stuff was a lot. And yeah, I think the, everyone's uh, going to be impressed. Yeah, the, the guitar part, Fogarty did a lot of studio overdubs. And there's once you start dissecting them, you're, you kind of hear what's going on. Sometimes replicating that live can be, a, you know, a bit tricky. So that was a bit of a chore, but also a good activity to learn some new things and uh, understand how he wrote. So, so you felt like by... Going through in, in more detail the actual song structure and the key and, and the arrangement, right? So you were able to, to piece together the different parts. Well, I, I guess you have to, right? Because you've got to put them together so you can play them. Right. Yeah. You know, try to get as close as we can with, you know, also kind of putting our own spin but maintaining the spirit of the song. D does that bring you closer to the song? It doesn't, you know, I, I think of like, cooking and too much can spoil something? Uh, I was wondering and worried if this would kind of run CCR for me, but like from a singing standpoint and actually like really reading the lyrics, because Fogarty, there are a lot of Fogartyisms where you're like, I don't really know what he's yeah. saying. Uh, but after reading through some of the lyrics, like I'm like, wow, this song is even better than I thought it was. Uh -huh. Like uh, Someday Never Comes is an example, and like that relationship about a father and a son and I feel like I grew up in a time where that's how fathers and sons were, you know, like the dad went to work and there was this bit of emotional disconnection and, you know, the kid is like waiting on this connection to happen and, you know, Sunday never comes and then he ends up, that ends up passing on to the son. So like, there are all these heavy themes that at first, you know, maybe you don't really think about it, but when you start reading the lyrics, you're like, oh wow. I remember thinking, I like this more than Cats in the Cradle. Yes, yes, it's a very, it's a very similar theme song. Because yeah. it, it's rich emotionally in a way where I felt like Cats in the Cradle was was like bludgeoning you. Trying, trying a little too hard. Well, and Fogarty was very plain spoken, and I feel like yeah. that was one that was one of the big things. Is like anyone of any any level could get something out of this because he tells the story in, in this plain, simple language, but then, like, the meaning behind it can be so much deeper, you know? Yeah. Well, well Dan, is, as the band director, <laughs> slash choreographer. That's right, that's right. I expect to see some pretty impressive dance moves, Dan, just saying. Oh, man. <laughs> no pressure, though. No pressure. Well, maybe if we did the Stones thing, get the Mick Jagger go. <laughs> maybe that's the next one. Ooh, ooh, I've got suggestions there. Sticky oh. fingers. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, come on. And Exile. Oh, oh, I've, been, I've been listening to a... a Alejandro oh, Escovedo's cover of Sway. Oh, I need to hear that. Oh, I will. Because I like Alejandro a lot. He's good. But, oh, yeah. oh, man. Oh, yeah. There's a guy, there's a guy who can bring you to there. tears, bring yeah. you to tears. Um, his 2 a.m. song, you know, where he, he's just, you know, you know, you're still, you're supposed to be still awake. I'm done and I come home to you and you're asleep and we're growing apart. I guess 
pretending is all we have between us. I'm like, stop, you're making me cry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So as the band director, as the guy who, who dissected more of, of some of the music, although I'm sure you guys all had a hand in that. We just did what Dan said. Wait, wait, did, didn't we talk about that? You don't say that on there. <laughs> but Not true. In all, in, all, in all seriousness, Dan, did delving into the music almost in a musicological way, did... Did that burn you out on CCR at all? Kind of the way Billy was worried about? No, uh, it gave me more appreciation because some of the things will sound kind of more straightforward and simple, but then there's some deception there. When you dig in, you realize there's, you know, even with the structure of the songs, there's some things in there that are a little more complicated and, and it's a good thing. And you realize it's, you know, almost a good songwriting trick, but yeah, to try to replicate it, yeah. you know, it's... Uh, it's been rewarding for sure. So the thing that I love about having Dan in the, in the Pioneers is is Dan knows how to pick out a melody, mm -hmm. and he and he makes hooks and earworms, and that's what Fogarty does. Like his like those guitar licks were like those are parts of the song that you also sang, and so I think that there's like this natural sure. ability of, of Dan to do that. Yeah, the Fogarty yeah. thing. There a lot of them aren't you know super difficult or hard. But it's kind of the that whole uh, you know play something simple and effective, and that's a lot of what he does, and we all know the song. And it's captivating, right? It, it doesn't have to be overly complicated to to be interesting or to be something that speaks to you. Yep, exactly. So this Saturday, Yellow Cab Tavern, a song for everyone. We've got. Billy Swain and Dan Spoggy of Neo American Pioneers, who will be leading the charge to play CCR at the Yellow Cab Tavern for this particular event. You know I gotta play it because you're here. One of my favorite Neo American Pioneer songs from their excellent Beginning to Unfold record. Sometimes you can't, when, when they play it and Dan gets to that solo part, I'm hooping and hollering in the back because it just so perfectly reaches that kind of emotional payoff, right? When you, when you guys are working on a show like this, I have to imagine putting the set list together is just as emotionally draining <laughs> as choosing the songs. Yeah, and doing it, usually we're putting a set list together with like 10 or 12 songs, but putting it with 25, we are splitting it into two sets, which did make it easier, yeah. but, you know, but yeah, we uh, we were able to come up with a pretty good, I think, good order with good flow and good variety through each set to kind of spread out the different songs, so. You, you definitely need to have that ebb and flow, right? You need that. Ebb. Oh, yeah. We're being a little cryptic because we don't want to reveal the of course, set list. Of course, of course. Well... We're going to play a song or two and then come back and you guys can play live for us. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Oh, awesome. You remember the first time, was it the release show? Or, or, it, may have been, it may have been the release show. I forget when I just saw you, you know, nail this and you told me later, it's like, I like this more than I like the recorded version. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, I, I would totally go back and retrack, but a lot of it's just the tone, and it probably use a different guitar. Oh, well, but sure, we, like, sure. I think all of us will say that about things. We It's always yeah. something, right? Oh, God. Like, I wish I could retake that vocal or redo this, or, you know. Yeah. I, I, look, I look at things that I wrote in my first few years after, as I was either getting or after the PhD. I'm like, oh, my God, what a bonehead mistake. Right. And, and you know, editors don't catch everything. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. That's true. Well, okay, no, that's going to haunt me for the rest of my professional career. <laughs> this was kind of the, I feel like this was the first song that we really wrote together. Because a, a couple of the first songs we started playing were some older songs that I had had and we are just kind of recreating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this one we, we really put together together as a band. Oh, I don't know that I have a preference here. Obviously, I need to put more CCR in the computer. <laughs> well, well, don't, don't play Lodi or Bill Stop the Rain. Oh, okay, play don't it. play. Say it again. Bill Stop the Rain or Lodi. Okay, okay, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's a good choice. I'll tell you, we won't say it on the radio. Well, we are, we are on Facebook Live. Okay, oh, no. okay. so I'll stop I'll you there. I'll say it. Right, right, right. I can say it. I can tell about oh. down the corner. Rut row. <laughs> Our good friend Chris Blank will be singing down the corner. Oh, oh, and she's perfect for this song. Because that was one that was a bit yeah. of a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't feel like... 
I don't really like that song. <laughs> so for me, it was like... It Get out! Like, no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Well, and it wasn't good. Like, when we were first we doing it, 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 it was not it. good. It's, it's, it's very got a sync. weird rhythm, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it has a weird sync. rhythm. Yeah, um, it's very challenging. Like, oh, way oh, God. more challenging than everything. I can only imagine. I don't I don't play, but just from what my ear can detect, it's like, wait, 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 what is... That progression sounds weird or feels weird to me, listening to it. Um, yeah. Okay, at least Dan's not going, okay, he's a total idiot. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just it's, very it's, jumpy, and if, you, if yeah. you get off the tracks, you're kind of screwed. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, you could easily, you could, yes, easily. Yes. And I've heard other people cover it, and it's always been bad. Oh, sure, well, sure. D during the COVID, you know, the quarantine, uh, Fogarty was doing, like, these uh, videos with his kids. Yeah, and yeah. They, and they did that with no drummer, and it was... It's a little, good. A little loose. It's not good. <laughs> well, I mean, with, without that foundation and also yeah. just to know where you're going. Yeah, so the cowbell and shakers help yeah, a lot. Yeah, Chris, yeah, Chris, Chris brought over this auxiliary percussion. For the first time last night, and it, it like, came together. Just, well, will Eric get up and do percussion with her? He's not it? this thing. Oh, okay, so. okay. Because I, I, I've noticed the two of them will off and work yeah. off each other. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, maybe go grab the guitars. Yeah, sure. Please. I'm sorry, I don't mean to, oh, no. to be a jerk about I need, it. I need direction. Song because oh yeah, no worries. Can I do this with this chair? Well, I, I'm told the arms come off, but I'm never able to actually effectively take them off. So if they're in your way, feel free to pull them up. This is a good song to pick though, because it's long. <laughs> what gives you time? You get time. I get I get to enjoy Dan's guitar work. Cool. Well, I remember I wasn't the only one hooping and hollering, you know, the first time that, that, that you guys did this. Exactly. <laughs> well, I forgot there was that keyboard, that Wesley keyboard. Oh, yeah, it was so long. Yeah, but it, but it works so well together. Yeah. Oh, it's, no worries. People will be like, oh, you must be mad the phone rang while you were on air. Well, now you know that I'm not lying. People do call in. <laughs> yeah, I got a is this a good place for the mic? Or? I would. Yeah. Are you just? Are you just, just playing? Just not, playing. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I would probably do do okay. just slightly, and uh, you're singing, so I'm probably just going to leave it right about there. And remember, just and uh, just just play. I'll worry oh, yeah. about the levels. Centro is one. And you've got a couple more minutes before yeah. we pop in. Well, I was on vacation last. Well, okay, I was on a work trip. That was part vacation. And I didn't play guitar for a week, so. Okay. Oh dear. Yeah. Calluses are not not quite as strong as they should be. Well, yeah, I'm just like like little bad memory things. Oh. I can pass zero judgment on you. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a tune? Cause they're uh, they were tuned in like not to like you know perfect. Tune. Oh oh yeah 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 yeah. Uh, well, and, and, and they, is it wrong to say they did that often? I think there are, CCR seems to Well, well see, that there's some factors. Thank you. There's some yeah. factors to that, because it could be the tape speed, but it also could oh, be, uh, yeah, yeah, if they yeah. were like tuning to the piano in the room, everyone, it could have been, uh, you know. Oh, pardon me, excuse me. Well, I mean, and, and there are times when I've listened to, as all of us have, different demos from the Beatles and things like that, I'll be like, what key is that? <laughs> it's like, I don't know what that is. And, oh, well, because they were doing something, you know, Paul was on piano or something like that, that they were they were kind of trying to key into each other rather than say, like, a perfect C or a perfect yeah. G or a perfect whatever, right? Um, yeah, playing along to C star, there's definitely a lot of that. I was, Some songs were harder because I'm like, this doesn't sound really yeah. good. Not, 
which which is okay. <laughs> I mean, they're in Kia themselves, but right, they're in Kia right. So I'm just like, oh, like this is tough. One, uh, and that's probably. Gosh, I have seen many a band try to cover some of these songs and be like, oh, oh, I feel bad for you. <laughs> well, there, there's none of them that I'm embarrassed of. I mean, like mistakes will happen, but like, oh, as yeah, far, yeah, yeah. As far as like the overall. Well, I, I don't think I've ever seen any band that didn't make a mistake, right? I've been to some pretty big shows where you're paying a lot of money to be oh, there, yeah. and you're like, you're like, ooh, oh, that's a clam, oh, that's a clam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just about a year ago. whole time you're doing that. Yeah, so right. You know. It must get really tiring after a while. Yeah, it's not my favorite thing to do. But, <laughs> yeah. A classic Creedence Clearwater Revival song, Down on the Corner. And before that, a terrific song, Sometimes sorry, Sometimes You Can't, from Neo-American Pioneers. You're listening to WUDR Dayton. Rock in the Gem City, music in all directions. Support your local music scene. This is your Tuesday afternoon alternative every 3 to 6 p.m. or so. We come to you from the fine, fine studios at Art Street. We have Billy Swain and Dan Spoggy of Neo-American Pioneers who are here, they're going to play live for us, but let me remind you one more time, since that's kind of my job, they have a terrific tribute show to CCR this Saturday, May 7th, at the Yellow Cab Tavern, Doors at 8, Music at 9. You guys got something for us? Yeah, so this one's uh, Lodi. I would say if I didn't move from a small country town, maybe Dayton would be my Lodi. But... All right. Ready? Can you count it? One, two, three, four. Just about a year ago, I set out on the road, seeking my fame and fortune. Sorry, live audience, but let's try this from the top again. <laughs> I'm on vacation last week, slash work. Okay. One, two, three, four. Oh, 
of Neo-American Pioneers doing a CCR classic here on your Tuesday afternoon alternative. This is WUDR Dayton, rocking the gem city. Go see Neo-American Pioneers this Saturday at the Yellow Cab Tavern for this terrific tribute. You can probably get tickets in advance but there will be tickets at the door. Of course, our favorite pizza in the city of Dayton happens to be the Pizza Bandit. Although, you know, is there such a thing as bad pizza? Yeah, I suppose there is such a thing as bad pizza. But definitely go and enjoy that fine, fine show. Remember, support your local music scene. That was great, guys. I, I really appreciate you. Oh, other, the time. Than the, other than the train wreck. So it takes two days. <laughs> well, when you get the Jeez. file from me, that won't even be in there. It will, like, it never happens. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> what about all the live listeners? <laughs> well, well, they're just going to keep it to themselves, right? Yeah. Those of you on Facebook who are watching and listening, those of you who are on this particular medium that we call radio airwaves or the internets, just keep it to yourself. You, you don't need to tell anybody. Well, let's, let's do something that we have to do in radio because, you know, it's how it works. Let's pay a few bills and we'll be right back. Dude, I, that's another thing too. Like we haven't played a show forever, so I'm like, yeah, so, so I'm not, I'm not used to like playing in, in anywhere other than the basement right now. Do you guys need a few minutes? Are you ready to pop back in? I'm just ready to go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Billy. Oh, wait, wait, you're also right here. That's weird. That's weird that, that it's oh, you on God. the system and you here in the studio. As, I guess as long as you don't touch the computer, there'll be no hole ripped in time and space. Hopefully not. <laughs> if you're just joining us, we are nearly at the end of your Tuesday afternoon alternative. Billy Swain and Dan Spoggy of Neo-American Pioneers are here. They have a terrific show at the Yellow Cap Tavern this Saturday night. A song for everyone, a CCR tribute. Can we get one more song from you guys? Yeah, we'll play uh, my personal favorite, Who Will Stop the Rain. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
Explain Dan Spoggy here in the studio. I've got to say, how did you guys get to the idea? Like, we should do this. We should do a tribute to CCR. Money grab. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't believe that. <laughs> uh, I think maybe coming out of last year, just looking to, to do something different and new with the band before we kind of start working on new material it's almost like eating sushi and you know having a little something you know what's what's the stuff you you eat between it uh the little uh oh cleanse your palate oh the ginger ginger jeez yeah i, I was totally it's, drawing a blank yeah, 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 yeah i know so was i but it's like you know it's kind of a palate cleanser you know after covid and all that stuff it's nice to maybe do something different and then come back at it and hit it full force and honestly, I think we learned a lot as a band from doing this because, you know, there's a couple songs where we're changing keys or transposing stuff to play with the capo or whatever. Like, I learned a lot about, like, the Nashville numbers and chord changes, and I feel like everyone in general learned a little bit more about rock and roll just from kind of digging this deep into a band that has such a rich rock and roll history. Well, thank you guys so much for spending time with us today, for coming in. Can you play us out? What else we got? That. Want to do it? Yeah, yeah. So.
Dude, I've used, I've used, I've used the lyric sheet as a crutch the whole time, and when I was on the spot, I was like, shit. Hey, but I did it. That was I, got, I got all the lyrics, man. Yeah. yeah, I totally used the lyric sheet as a crutch for that song. Well, I can, I can see why. And I'm watching, I'm watching you play, Dan, and I'm thinking, Man, that's hard. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to have the drums and everything. You know, it's easier to play with a big group of people than by yeah. yourself. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for all yeah, you do, Dr. J. We appreciate oh, thank it, man. you guys. Hopefully, more people come out instead of less. Yeah. <laughs> I think well, that's the that's the plan. I think we're reaching over the COVID hump a bit, you know. And I hope, right? It was. I mean, it was just Paul and I were talking about the other day, just like releasing these albums during COVID and just like. It's like it's changed things a bit, you know, people going out and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Uh, so were, were we still in lockdown when Into the Deep? Yeah. Well, well when it, was supposed it was 2020. To we did the release in summer, 20, last summer. Yeah. So it was like... We had a pretty good turnout. We did. Yeah. Well, I, it wasn't a hot height of lockdown. Right. Still, a lot was going on. Yeah.